Luke 24 chapter. Luke 24, I'll start the 46th verse. You guys stick around, will you? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to go back. And I'm not going to be too long. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> it won't take me long to say what i got to say here. Then we're going to do some more singing. We're going to do some more rejoicing. Okay, in the 46th verse it says, And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that redemption, no, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Now you see, I read that to let you know that God has kept his promise. He promised us. He gave us a promise that he would bless us. That he would do the things on his side. You know, but we have to do the things that God put in our power to be blessed. See, God has a plan from the Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. God has a plan and how he wants to work things. Now, you may think that you've got your own plan, but you don't. Okay, you may think you're going to do one thing and then God will do another. No, God's going to do his way, one way or the other. The Bible says that he sets up kingdoms, he tears down kingdoms, he sets everything up the way he wants it. Now, yeah, the old song the others used to say, you may run on for a long time, but God Almighty will cut you down. Now, there's a few things I want to say that don't have nothing to do with the servants, okay? But I'm talking to scammers. I'm talking to uh, hackers that get on the computer and take people's money and, and do things. And I want you to know, I'm sending a message out there, that God is tired of it. He's tired of people being scammed. He's tired of being people getting uh, taken advantage of. And your, your arms, your, your hands are going to freeze until you get to know what to do with those hands. Until you get to know you can't scam God's people anymore. Until you get to know that God has a control, you will see, my friend, whoever you are, you went too far. And it's went up before God Almighty. Now, that don't have nothing to do with my message, but it is God's message to people. Hey, God sets up kingdoms and he tears down kingdoms. He will have what he wants. He put everything together. And I want you to look at uh, Haggai, the first chapter. I want you to know that there's people that's, that, that's not being blessed. Man, I used to make money. I used to make all kinds of overtime and work hard. And I didn't hardly have two dimes to rub together after all the bills came out and everything done. I thought, Lord, why? Why is this happening? Then I run across this fellow. His name was Charlie. And he was a drunk. He was a blast trainer. He went to bars and everything else. But he had money all the time. He could open up his bill for at any given time and bring forth a whole lot of $100 bills. I said, Charlie, where'd you get all that money? I said, what are you dealing in dope or what? He said, no. He said, I'm not. He said, I just do something that I learned in the Bible. He said, I used to be a Sunday school teacher when I was younger. And in the Sunday school, I was taught if I pay my tithes, that God will bless me. Now here's somebody who's not even a Christian, and he's got sacks of money in the billfold. And I thought, well, man. I said, you mean to tell me it's that important? He said, oh, yeah. He said, I know if I die right now, I'm going to hell. He said, but I know one thing. He said, God's word is true. He said, if I pay my 10%, he'll bless my 90. Amen. And that's the way he lived. And I hope he got saved one day. I don't know. I, I lost contact with him. But you know what? I learned something there. I went home and I told my wife, we're going to pay our tithes. She said, we can't. She said, that we're $50 overdrawn now. I said, I don't care. Just put everything on the back burner. We're paying our tithes first. We paid our tithes and we checked our bills again with $50 in, in the green. $50 to the good. All of a sudden, just boom, like that. I said, that's it. Every week we're paying our tithes. 
So we start paying our tithes and God started blessing. God started turning things around for us. And you wouldn't believe how quick it happened. And uh, I thought, whoa, I, I need to start giving some offerings too. And I started reading Malachi 3.10 where it says, uh, would a man rob God? He said, but you've robbed me. He said, this whole nation has robbed me. And that's exactly what people are doing. They say, how have we robbed you, Lord? He said, because of your tithes and offerings, you're not doing it. He said, bring it into the storehouse. He said, and see if I won't open up a window of heaven and bless you. The Bible says in Luke 6, 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run over shall men give unto your bosom. Why? Because you give. Now that's Jesus talking. And they say, well, the New Testament don't say nothing about tithes and offerings. Yes, it does. Why? Wow. You just ain't read it. I want you to know that God has a plan. He has a purpose. He don't want people making their billfold in their pocket, but they're God. He wants to know that you love him. You know? And if you can't if you can't give ten dollars to the church out of a hundred dollars, then why would God bless you with anything else? I don't know why I'm preaching this, okay? I'd start out with something else. God's blessings is what I want to preach. God's blessings is what I want to teach to you. That God has paid the price for you, He gave you a promise. But you break that promise when you don't obey the will of God. We break the promise. The promise is in the Word. If you go against any part of that Word, then you're going against God. People are taking their tithes and buying a, a boat with it and paying their boat payments. And I've, I've seen people buy a car and, and say they can't pay the payment without taking their tithes. So they take their tithes and they pay their car. And guess what? The boat sinks and the car don't run. <laughs> Why? Why do you wonder they're playing with God Almighty that sets up kingdoms and tear us down? You're playing with God that can give life or take it away. But you see, God has mercy. He cares about us. <laughs> I'm not preaching because I want I want more time. I'm not preaching because I want you to line my pockets. Because well, I've got one. Okay? I've got a roof over my head. I've got food to put in my, my gut, maybe too much. I've got that, okay? I'm preaching to you because I want you blessed. And people aren't doing it. They're not, they're not listening to me. And I'm listening to all you people on Facebook. And all around the world, if you're listening, you want to be blessed and let God bless you. Listen to this in Haggai. First chapter, third verse. The second verse is there. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? You know, God's house should not lie waste. There should be everything that needs to be done should be done. But it isn't that way. You got know, these churches, man, there's pastors walking off the job by the, by the thousands. There's people leaving churches because of some little trivial something they hear or, or, or something they see that they don't like. Instead of getting to the bottom of it, they leave their own church. It's like this church here. There's been a lot of people left this church. This isn't my church. It belongs to you. And if you leave your church, then you're turning your church over to the devil. I'm not going to do that. If I'm the last man standing, I'm going to be here. Amen? Amen. I'm going to pay my tithes if no one else does. I'm going to give my offerings if no one else does. Because God blesses when I do. It says, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Who? You're talking about God talking here. Consider your ways. He's talking to you there. Give so much and bring in little. Anybody ever been there? I've been there and done that. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. 
and that, that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into bags with holes in it. Now, ain't that something? We, we make money, but it's like we put them in our pocket and our pocket's got holes in it. How many times have you ever lost money out of your pocket because they had holes in it? I have. <laughs> it's not a very good, pleasant feeling. I've misplaced money before. Now, where'd that money go? Hey, God's love to have an angel. Said, you know, he don't need that. He, he ain't paid his tithe, so let's just take this. Let's just take that. Hey, God can do anything he wants to, people. He said, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. He said that twice already. Consider your ways. Hey, it don't matter what anybody thinks about you. It don't matter where you're at or where you're going. You consider your ways, not someone else's. We're too busy considering everybody else's ways. We're too busy looking at everybody else to consider what we're doing. You want to be blessed, you'll do it God's way. Amen? And God's way is the best way. Amen. If you can't pay tithes on a thousand, why would he give you ten thousand? He won't. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. You look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of mine house that is waste. And you run every man unto his own house. God is tired, people. He's tired. There's so many people. People say, I, I pay my tithes. Do you? Only God knows. This church never seen any of it. Don't get me wrong, we have good tithe payers here. It wasn't for the tithe payers we have here. This church would have been shut down a long time ago. But you know, I thank God for the tithe payers here because they're not the type of people that only pay their tithes when, when everything's going good. Amen? When the church was down and nobody was coming, they still brought tithes into the storehouse. They still brought their tithes to the Lord. And I thank God for you. I thank God for you obeying God. But there's so many people that just push God away. And God wants to bless us. He sent us a promise. He gave us a promise that the Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us in all the ways of the truth. He gave us the word to teach us. Amen. A long time ago, I put my I put my bill full on the altar. I put my bill full out there for God and said, Lord, anything that's in there, you can have. If it isn't in there, you can put it in there and then still take it. <laughs> hey. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He can have anything he wants because he gives and I'm going to give it back to him. And you're going to give it back to him if you're smart. You cannot outgive God. You can't show me anyone in the whole word of God or anywhere that has ever gave God more than he ever gave back. You can't outgive him. He gives and he gives and he gives. He gives his love to people. He sends the rain on the just and the unjust. He blesses us when no one else does. I wouldn't trade him for all the money and gold in the world. I wouldn't take nothing for my Lord and Savior because he lives. Amen. I owe him everything. I owe him everything that I have and everything I will have. Amen. I owe it to him. Now I got one goal in mind, people. It's not to please anybody. It's to please God. My goal is to get to heaven. That's a hard job sometimes. It's a long way there. And you've got to stay straight. The Bible says, straight is the gate and narrow is the way and few there be that find it. But one of the main principles that people are overlooking in the Word of God today is paying their tithes. You don't believe in times? Look at Levit Leviticus 27th chapter, 30, 30 verse, 31st verse. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, the first verse. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 16, 1. 
where it says bring all your tithes into the storehouse on the first day of the week. That's Sunday. So bring your tithes into the storehouse. So I want that bad no collections want to come. You see it all through the Bible. Jesus spoke about tithes. In Matthew 23. Read it sometime. Matthew 23, I think 23. It's all through there. But if you don't obey God, God's not going to bless you. Do you hear me? God wants you to be blessed. He wants His people to be powerful. But you're not going to be powerful unless you obey what He says. God's tired of a weak church. He's tired of a two-faced, backbiting, stabbing church. He wants people to be on fire for Him. He wants people to walk and talk a, a Christian faith and a Christian language, which is not cussing, which is not lying, which is not cheating, which is straight and narrow. And that's not hard once you learn his language. You see, he speaks a different language than the world does. He speaks the language of love. When I first got saved, I gave my life to the Lord. I was the biggest blasphemer ever to talk. I couldn't even talk English. I cussed, and I cussed, and I cussed. And it took me about two months at least to quit cussing. But I kept working at it. I kept saying, Lord, please, let me talk the way you want me to talk. And all of a sudden, one day, I'm up here talking to somebody. I was like, well, there's no cuss words there. Nothing's coming out. Glory to God, I've been delivered. Yeah. And I rejoice, and I praise God. Because he cared enough for me to do, deliver me. But we've got to be bold for God. We've got to be obedient to what He says in His Word. Not just one scripture. A lot of people will make a denomination on one scripture. But it isn't that one scripture is going to get you to heaven. It's the whole Word. Jesus said, Lo, I come in a volume of the books it is written of me. He's in all of it. All 66 books tells about Jesus Christ. And I want you to know, he did all he can to bless you. Will you be blessed? Will you be blessed? He told the man at the lake there, he'd been laying there for quite a few years. He said, impotent and he couldn't walk or anything. He said, would you be healed? The man said, I can't, Lord. Nobody will take me down and put me in the, in the water when it's trouble. He said, take up your bed and walk. And the man took up his bed and walked. Glory to God, he was healed right there. Would you be healed? Huh? He asked the man. <coughs> yeah, you would think the man be thankful, wouldn't he? If you've been laying there all those years, and all of a sudden, man, you're healed and you're walking, and everything's good, you think you'd be happy, wouldn't you? <coughs> the Sanhedrin asked him, why are you carrying your bed? He said, well, the man that healed me, he said, take up my bed and walk. And he said, well, who is it? Who was that? He said, I know not. So then Jesus caught him a little bit later and told him who he was. And he went right him out to the Sanhedrin. He went right him out to them people who wanted to kill him. He said, it was Jesus that healed me. Hey, <laughs> he wasn't happy that Jesus healed him. He was happy that I had something bad to say about the man. Hey, when they nailed him to the cross, look at all the thousands of people that he healed. Look at all the multitudes. The Bible says that he healed 5,000 people. 5,000 men plus women and children. Trust me, they had a lot of kids there. And a lot of women. Some of these guys had three or four wives. I mean, how many people did he heal there? The Bible says he healed them all. He's not selfish. Would you be healed? Would you be healthy? Would you be happy? Obey God. Get in God's will and you're going to be happy. Get in God's will and hear His word and you will be healed. I've been listening to Vicki's uh, CD that she has out. It's uh, her healing tape. And I, I want you to know there's enough scripture in here and enough of her testimony to turn Columbus, Ohio, Darbydale, and all around, upside down. I mean, the Holy Ghost is on this CD. I play it all the time, and I just cry like a baby because of the anointing that's on the CD. 
I thank God for my wife. She's gone home. Yes. But she's still testifying right here. Her testimony is, is outstanding. And the scriptures that she uses are the scriptures that got her healed from cancer. She had cancer real bad. Doctor said there was no hope for her. But God healed her because she took the time to apply the word of God to her life every day. Even in the middle of the night, she was quoting that word. And God just simply healed her. He just simply took it all away. And I want you to know that God has a plan for you. You don't have to be sick and afflicted. You don't have to be down. You don't have to be poor. God don't want no poor people. He wants you rich. Rich in what? Rich in love. Rich in happiness. Rich in joy. Rich in your, your families. Riches isn't all in money, people. It isn't all in money. When you give to him, he gives back. Sometimes it all isn't in money. But what he gives is good. He loves you. I said what God wants me to say. I don't know why he wants me to say it, but I'm, I've said it. What I said, I said, and I'm not taking it back. I said, Moses said, who, who should I tell the people sent me? He said, tell them I am sent you. I am that I am. When Jesus said, I am that I am, he took up stones, he was going to stone me. He didn't say I was what I was. He said, he didn't say I is what I is. He said, I am that I am. Not yesterday, not uh, a month ago, but the Bible says today is the day. Today is the day and now is the accepted time. Now is the time that God wants to save you. Now is the time God wants to heal you. Now is the time God wants to bless you financially and everywhere of your life because he gave the promise. I read it to you. Promise has already been given.